Does everybody like our music? I find it so chill. I almost fell asleep. You know that, right? I don't know if it should be like very it's early just... day for me. I'm up at like five, well, you as well. I'm up at five thirty-six now. But oh, we are live! Hey guys! Oh, we're live. <laughs> so hello, 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 everybody! <laughs> Welcome. It's Friday, finally Friday. Hi, Joseph, Jennifer. Thanks for joining us. Yay! Hello. Hi, Byron. So um, maybe uh, Amber will join us. She'll pop in, but we're not sure. We're not so sure yet. Yeah. Maybe we'll get lucky. We'll see. So welcome, everybody. I don't know if you saw, I posted on my story on Instagram, the little preview of today's project. And if you, if you want to see the beginnings of it, I started this on Tuesday, so you can watch a Han and yes. I's replay on Tuesday. What did you make on Tuesday? Oh, let me. Um, you have it there handy. Yes. So me. we have all the live streams available on replay, and you guys can watch them. We've been live streaming for over a year now. Ton of stuff on there. Great content. Okay. And okay. Uh, we well, started. Yeah. So, Marley started. This is the, for you. This is a two-day project, right? Yes. So we started on Tuesday. I started on Tuesday and I finished on Tuesday. <laughs> so um, here's a little. Oh, well, let's. Yes. So this is what I created on Tuesday. If you guys remember, I was really looking forward to using my snowman cutter, but I couldn't find it for about two weeks. And so I found it last week and I uh, created these uh, scarecrow cookies. Super and cute. you guys were so awesome. You gave me so many different ideas on how to use this cutter creatively with different designs. So I'm going to try to do some of those. And I also used my gingerbread cookie dough recipe. And this recipe, I have it um, on my blog. And um, I just wanted to show you. Oh, well, thank you. So here are the cookies that are listed on I the I have to page. say, those look very tasty. <laughs> they are very tasty. Today I ate five, okay? So because I have them like in here in a bag so I can decorate them, but I don't know if I'll have enough to decorate actually. Because they're oh very, gosh, very yeah. So yes, yeah, so check it out. It's a recipe, gingerbread man cookies on hanyolas.com. And... Um, All right, so that's 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 on the replay so if you guys want to watch that you'll find it you'll find it on uh, in the facebook and on youtube so i did load a few i'm decorating live but i did load a few things um and i'm just going to show you quickly so i'm using drip color airbrush and if you're in my groups either facebook or on patreon i added the link so what I did is I actually airbrushed little uh, royal icing discs. So I had leftover icing. I piped a bunch of circles. And don't stress about it being perfect. Don't need a template. And then I airbrushed them so that I could actually see. Because when you look at the bottle, yeah, they have a sticker on it. But you don't really, really know what it's going to look like. So there it is. There are the samples. So I did that. Um, and then I wanted to show you this. I'm working on chocolate cookies. So when you watercolor, you're essentially putting like really liquidy stuff on your royal icing and the cookie can absorb that. And if you airbrush, you can also get like, and so if that's something that you don't like, well, when you work on a chocolate cookie, that doesn't happen because the cookie is so dark, especially if you're using the Barry Cocoa that uh, that I that I like to use. I actually loaded um, an automatic reply on my story on Instagram. So if you reply to my story, top one, two, three, I'm going to text you back the direct links for the cocoa powder, my uh, magnifying glasses. You guys have seen them on, on a few occasions. Are you going to put those on? Hey, everyone. Glasses and my favorite airbrush. <laughs> They, they, you, you should be doing the ad, you know, the commercial for it. I mean, you're just... Well, you know, sometimes you just can't see the little tiny things. Yes, and, and you know true. what happened? When I was working on some cookies, I had those glasses on and I saw my marker tip was damaged. It was brand new, but it was like cut in oh, half. Oh, really? So my line was writing split. Like I was getting two yes. instead of one line. Oh, so, yeah. 
So that's Let me it. Just go back. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you, thank you, Nicole. Yes, I did find the cutter. Hello, Joseph, Debbie. So, Mari, you wanna you wanna kick so it up today? One more thing. So last week I mentioned that if you stick your little fondant decorations to a surface, like a, this is an acetate sheet, then they don't blow around when you airbrush them. So there they are, airbrushed. Okay. So you can Very nice. see. And here they are attached. And obviously this is super speed because we're live airbrushing. I'm gonna do a bit, but it's tough. Like I have to wash out all my colors and stuff. So you can see here, I just hit a little bit in green, a little bit in brown, and a little bit. Are all you know, done with the, with the mold? Those are all made with a, a fondant mold, yes. So cute. And, and yeah, so you just get your decorations painted a lot faster than if, sorry, if you dust them, because if you dust them, well, you have to pick up each little one. This way you can work fast because as you know, time is money. So if you're spending hours on these leaves, well, your cookies, you can't make more cookies, right? The more cookies you make, the more money you make. So that's, you know, a little time saver there. So I'm going to turn on my camera here and we'll do the little dance. Here, this, no, nope, it's this one, this one, this one. Hello, Angie. Adriana. Hey, right. Here you can see my my colors that I used here on the ghost here. Let's put the ghost in frame so you can see. And um, I like the little the little um, discs because you can kind of take them and see, oh, does this go together? You know, where did I put my Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. It's a little you can create. Yes, that's a good idea. I like yeah, your ghost. It's kind of like... like I had pulled it. It's a vintage vibe for me. I don't know. What do you guys think? Does the ghost have like a vintage? Here I have my other one. Okay. So you can kind of like see right away. Oh, do I like these two together? I don't. And they're dry. You can just store them with your airbrush. It doesn't, you know, nobody's eating this. I wrote in pencil. This is not food. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. I wrote in pencil so that I knew exactly what the colors were. Oh, somebody. <laughs> Oh, Hello. She back out. I'm not touching it. Hello. 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 <laughs> How's it going? Just saying whether we, we don't know. We were just saying we didn't know whether you are going to be able to join us. I made it. Mm -hmm. okay. Welcome. <laughs> so so I'm talking about on? my, I made airbrush samples on little royal icing discs so you can see the colors. And so then you can take your disc, like I was saying, and just you can see, oh, do I like this color palette or whatever, you know? And so this here is an airbrushed, and this here is painted right from the bottle, and this one here is diluted with alcohol. So again, you can see if you like it better with an airbrush surface. This one here, again, painted right out of the bottle. This one here is diluted. So it gives you a better kind of idea of you know how your colors are going to look That's so great. i think i'm actually going to start with the um, let's start with the watercolor version so here is the prototype so last week we decorated them in the white icing and you can see here the the bubbles because i didn't just flood the whole surface which you could you could just do one big white area but i, I love this shape. Have, where did you get this cutter this is actually in the global belly shop oh is it the tall tall yeah. pumpkin yeah i like that a lot it's very nice and so here is a paint tray you can i think there's a six hole paint tray in the global belly store this is a, a bigger version and I'm using um, the alcohol. This is 94%. Uh, this is what's available in Quebec, but you can get high proof alcohol almost anywhere. And I'm just um, filling some of these little uh, wells with the alcohol. So when you um, watercolor, you can use gel. I personally like to use airbrush colors. So gel has gel kind of in it whereas airbrush is liquid so that it can go through the airbrush gun so you don't get all that little gunk in there yes. and i just like it better when i'm water like doing watercolor mm. so you can see here the little tops of the of the color you see it's not 
it's not really accurate. And this one here, actually, the in transportation, it leaked. It looks black. So I don't even get to see the, the really pretty purple there. So you can do one dot of just pure. And then you can put a dot, just one drop in the alcohol. And so you can, when you dilute your airbrush colors, you can actually dilute in different, like in ratio, you know, alcohol to airbrush color. So you could maybe do, you know, this is just pure alcohol. So I'll take some of this diluted version and bring it into the alcohol and further dilute it, which means it will be lighter. So I just want to talk about the drip colors. You know, I'll, I'm usually pretty uh, honest. So this is the negative with the drip color. When you squeeze your drop of color out, almost every time there is remnants of color left there. And if you don't wipe it, when you close it, it makes a splash. And I have gotten lucky. It hasn't been on my shirt, but a splash of airbrush color, we're all aware, is rather an annoying. So you have to kind of just wipe the edge there or else you're going to be getting it on your um, thing. So the other thing that I like when I'm doing watercolor is I like to use a different paintbrush for each color because it's kind of the way to keep, especially your light color looking true as, you know, if you take the light colored paintbrush and bring it into the dark purple, well, it's not, you know, if you're working, especially on several cookies, that's going to be really tricky. I soaked after I was done in um, vinegar. I just put vinegar in a, in a little glass and I soaked them and they got pretty close to clean because it is like, it, it does stain, right? It's very yes. concentrated. It's hard to get the color out of those brushes. Yes. So here, um, where's my cookie? How do, like I have like not, no space and how does the cookie disappear? <laughs> like, like no joke. I relate totally. I have two. Totally relatable. Yep. This is the weirdest thing. It's like the twilight zone right here. <laughs> it was right like there. Anyway, all right. Let me just look quickly. Are there any questions while? Uh... Oh, hello. Hello. Are there no questions. All right. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm doing this uh, coloring stuff with the uh, with the airbrush is I actually like to oh, see my brush had remnants in it, but it's okay. Cause it's the lighter one. But anyway, I like to wet the whole thing. And so I find that when you wet it, the colors just kind of like the word that's coming to mind is dance more. Mm -hmm. Like it just flows into yes. that alcohol yeah, that's on the surface. Mm -hmm as opposed to coming in with a um, dry surface, it doesn't like, especially if you're trying to get this kind of like whimsical type effect, it just doesn't go on the same way. Yeah, it spreads easy. Yeah, it kind of like bleeds and gets like drawn into the alcohol that's, you know, the other area. So now I'm just gonna grab some of that darker purple and you can see in the crack there, it kind of like, because it there's a bit more gets accumulated there. So the color is a bit darker. So if you want to let it dry the first layer, and then you can come in with another layer of color once it's dry. And then like dots of the same color will in, like be darker here. You, it really worked on this one. What I'm talking about, you can see mm -hmm. the little dots. Those are secondary layers mm -hmm. of color on top of a base color that had dried. And you can see it's super fast and easy and you can achieve a really interesting surface design on there. How long would you say it takes for, for the first layer to dry? A minute, a second, like it's, mm. it's, it's the yeah, height of the alcohol. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Like this is absolute insanity. I don't even know how. Oh, you can find the cookie. Hey, you can find the cookie. I cannot find. I mean, I didn't move. How does this happen? Well, I guess. Anywhere. You must have some creature. Another one. I love this shape. This is like my favorite shape. So, so. <gasps> turn it. If you turn it upside down, it could be a door. Yes, 
it could well, be a witch with a like with, uh, we are a witch too like with, but i'm thinking like that uh i just want to like, show another kind of like so you could do the ghosts in um light grays or mm -hmm. uh in the wedge wood yeah that would be cool so i'm just again just lightly i've wet the whole surface and i'm just adding the color all over no real rhyme or reason and you see you don't have to go super dark like this one here is quite light i can let it dry and then i'll come back in and like i was mentioning you see here there's no color seeping into my cookie because the cookie is this almost black color so i don't mm -hmm. get that ugliness there are you using ever uh, was it vodka you said uh no it's hot it's just like uh I, I guess what would be the equivalent is like a moonshine type thing it's it's 90 it's not any it's like it's grain, much, some kind of a grain alcohol. alcohol it just says alcohol on it yeah, it doesn't say um, mm -hmm. yeah you see i don't like it as much with the darker on the ghost kim, kim says it's like wrapping christmas presents and losing your tape <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway so there we go so you get to have like this you could do uh you know on a moon you could do it for clouds so you know and it's just an, a fast way to get a background design on your cookies all right so now i've got the the gold decorations i made last last week i painted them with my airbrush and you can just you see how that just and this is fondant and what gold did you use the gold it's a, really, is really nice gold. Gold. It's a, it's it's a very gold. nice lustrous well you know what's making it even darker it's this is um roxy rich it's because it's it's this colored fondant so if you're mm -hmm. coloring on white fondant mm -hmm. your gold is not going to be you see here white this is the yes. same gold okay mm -hmm. oh this, is it yeah wow and look at the That's difference different. yeah so it's you're, almost like uh like like bronze dish yeah mm -hmm. yeah so oh, you yeah. need to have like if you want an intense color like that you want to have a bit of, of pigment in your fondant so then you can color the stem if you want, add some white icing, or you can just leave it and attach it's your so little fondant Love decorations. That. And it's like, so the cookies, you ice them, let them dry 24 hours, then you can wrap them, undecorate, like, you know, just white, put them in the freezer. And then you can have like a more easy decorating day, mm -hmm. make your fondant pieces. And then the day you know, you're just, it's relaxed. You have all your little fun and decorations. You pull out your dry cookies and it's like zero stress. So Nicole is asking, wait, you got the gold color from an airbrush? Because you said Roxy and Rich. So yes, you put I it? put it, so I use this little container here, this little silicone. I put the gold in there with alcohol and then I squeeze it like that and I pour that in my airbrush. And so yes, it does clog the airbrush gun. I work always with my needle exposed so I can pull back the needle. And so the needle essentially seals the hole, right? It's like a little V that, that seals the hole. So if you pull back the needle, it releases the clump of whatever's accumulated there. Then you can put it back into position. So my needle is always exposed to facilitate unclogging the, the goal that does accumulate in that um, tip. You know, it does. So now with some white or whatever color, but usually, you know, you don't want to add too much so that it doesn't seep out and you don't want to have a color that's going to maybe bleed into your cookies and you just attach your little element and you've just taken the most simple cookie and made it into something like, you know, wow. For a wedding, I think too, like, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, well, there's a lot of like weddings. So yeah, yeah. You can do any color you want. You see the pumpkin here, they're typically um, orange, but it's purple. I added the link for the, that mold, which is so pretty in my uh, coffee shop. There is a supply list. It's the one from last week. We one has a good question. Oh, sorry. Um, you freeze the cookies? Um, before decorating, I think so. What do you guys think? 
Um, I wouldn't uh, like if you if you freeze them baked already. I wouldn't refreeze them. Oh no! If you freeze them unbaked, like if you if you cut them out, you freeze them on a sheet until yeah. they are frozen. That's like what I do. Single layer, and then mm -hmm. you can uh, stack them into a freezer safe container. Yeah. And then you bake them off, and then you can freeze them again after. Yeah. After you bake them off, but I wouldn't right. freeze baked Bakes, cookies yeah. twice. Because they they tend to dry out. Oh, okay, yeah. What did I have here? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so now we've got this one, and so last week I did the and I the parchment paper all wrinkled. So we're gonna lift that off, and you can see here that exposes the kind of texture. And this is more what it looks like, right? To have a fall leaf. Mm -hmm. And my mold here lines up perfectly for the stem. Oh, yeah, this could be also for the wedding. And if you put initial, yeah, that's very pretty. So now I'm going to airbrush the leaf. And you can see here. Oh, look at that. It, that's beautiful. It Because of the those little kind of cracks and stuff, well, the color just doesn't lay the same way as if you were just airbrushing on a smooth surface, you see? Like that's the, it just looks completely different. So let's do that. I'm actually going to just, if you permit me, I'm going to move this because I don't want to have a So Paula says that she has baked blanks and then defrosted and decorated and refroze them and they mm. were fine. So I guess, yes. But, but that, uh, yeah, that's have, a good, that like you test have to it test, and... test the mm. recipe depending on the recipe, I yeah. suppose. You know, like. Let, let's be brutally honest, though. If you're working on wedding cookies and you're, you know, this is like a hundred, you know, plus cookie project, you know, d don't worry about them not tasting perfect. At the end of the day, at a wedding, it's about looking perfect. That's the sad <laughs> truth. The food tastes like usually garbage. And so we're going to be looking at your cookies. I'm saving this. Hi, for you're really <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did I lie? <laughs> I said it's a it's time for our we should have a segment in our Friday live. Mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. Guys think of something, or I don't know, honesty segment. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pull out my other one. So here's the other one. And I'm just so when you're doing this, you want to actually group your airbrush cookies if possible together so that especially in a whimsical thing like this that's not really precise just group them as tightly as you can together so that you can maximize your color so that right you're getting your the most bang for your buck for the color and you can work so much faster if you have them all grouped together so i'm just gonna is that this. gold that you're using yeah, I was gonna say, is that gold it looks gold What's this gold? color is called evelana it's all Spanish. It's the drip color uh, colors. Okay. It, it so it's looks not gold. shimmery. It looks gold. It, is it yeah, shimmery? It looks like gold. No, wow, it's not okay. shimmery. Here are the... Oh, the bottom ones. ones. The bottom ones here. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, it looks very like much like gold. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have to wash the airbrush because now I'm coming in with a color called Calypso, which is orange. And so I don't have to wash the airbrush because you see they complement each other. And so mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it looking gross or brown. They like the colors you see, especially when they overspray on each other. Very pretty. That's so cool. Hi, Grace. And then you have your coverage really fast. And then my last color, I wanted to add a bit of green. So you can rotate. A paper towel makes a great airbrush turntable. You can rotate your cookies very easily. And now my last bit. You see my needle was far too deep, so my color wasn't coming out. So you want to adjust not on the cookie. Right. <laughs> this is kind of yeah. like a, like a Kelly Green. Mm -hmm. There. Very pretty. So that's it, super fast. And that again, you awesome. can just add a little, little bit of the of the royal icing and attach your little fondant bits onto your cookie. 
if you look at your fondant molds, you can kind of see, you know, think about it. If you have cookies that maybe have a shape where it can kind of be, you know, nestled into like this. So that's that one. That's awesome. I have time for one more. I just wanted to talk about layered stencils. Oh. So layered stencils, which is what I used uh, for the ghost here. So layered stencil, when you're airbrushing, it's not like when you're painting. So when you take paint on the end of your paintbrush and you touch the blue and you go right on the dot, well, you're just getting that dot of blue. Whereas when you're airbrushing, well, it comes out like it's a spray. So it's very difficult to get very precise to do that little leaf to do. So that's, you need to use stencils to do this level of really fine detail. Now, usually in the beginning, most people like the stencil, it's one layer. So you put the design down and you airbrush and you get all the same thing. Well, there's layered stencils, whereas you're putting a stencil and you're adding a color, then removing that stencil, putting another stencil. You see here, the first stencil was light purple. The second stencil was dark purple and the third stencil was green. And so you have to go step by step by step to get this really defined color sectioning. And the bow here is the same as the gold things. They were white and I airbrushed them. So you see, you get a perfect color match. And then the face that's, um, if you're, you know, doing something over like airbrush, you have to use dark color so that it doesn't show through. And this is actually royal icing there, that face. So you want to, not move your cookie just to facilitate layering the stencils because they have to obviously layer in a specific way for it to work. Yes, they look like actual leaves. Yes. That was all planned out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start with the light. So here now, let's, this is important stuff, what I'm about to explain. So now I've got the stencil on the killer zebra is up and facing me here. So you need to remember that because if after when you wanna do the second one, you have the killer zebra up here, it's not gonna work. So it's very important. And I put it right tight to the corner there. So you have to kind of remember that, make mental notes or else you're gonna be pulling your hair out to um, layer the, the colors. Oh, I just put, I just put purple in the one that had green. Oh, <laughs> oh well, good. Yeah. I'm going to move that aside. I, the color was so, like, I thought it was empty. The color was so deep in the little hole that I didn't even see that there was color. So technically, you'd need uh, to wash your airbrush two times to do this. If you have two guns, well, then you could work a little bit faster. So now I'm doing the light purple and... You don't have to go super dark. If you keep it more on the light side, well, it'll contrast more with the next details of the flowers, right? If you don't, would you say that you could use these for Christmas? Like if you airbrush them with, with sorry, what? would you say you could use this stencil for Christmas too? I'm thinking like if you airbrush with red and then dark red and then you like use it. It's it's one of right? the best sellers. I think you could use it with almost anything, really. And so you see here, oh, there was icing on the cookie. I was wondering why that got that dot. So now again, I'm positioning, see I'm tucking it as much as I can in the corner and it'll just make my life a little bit easier later when I have to do my second one. So I'm just gonna quickly do another one. And my cookie, it's not, it's not like um, super tight on the surface there. I think my icing is rounded you know, like a bubble. And so it's like kind of floating at the top, but that's fine. So now here I have my first, so I'm taking out the stencil and you can run through that color one. Did I do it again? Oh, so no, the stencil here. is from the killer zebra, correct? Yes. Do you have it in your coffee shop in a supply yeah, list? in that um, supply list. So okay. again, you see coffee shop here, you can click on the, oh, you can, yeah, it's well, in the shop coffee shop. There, yes. So I've got it here, you see, in the same position, right at the corner. 
it's just going to make my life easier when I want to layer the next one, you see? So now I'm able, I see the purple through it from that first section. And actually, I'm going to try to do it just all in the same color if I just darken. Because I did it so light. And then there's actually a little flower there. And you can do a little bit of, the, like, let's say you wanted to make those blue, you could. You just have to get a little bit closer because the closer you are to your cookie with your airbrush, the more detail you can kind of get. All right. Oh, the hand has something. There. All right. So then when you lift that off, look how pretty that is. So pretty. So, so Angie's that's... asking, do you use silk screen over your stencils when airbrushing? I mean, it really depends on the design. Something like this, I don't find that the slight miss impacts the design. You know, like if you're doing stripes, I guess. But like this, I didn't. And look, the other thing that's the, the, the wireless airbrush doesn't blow like some of the airbrushes. It's a really soft wind. And so you don't get as much underspray. Oh, I did not know that about it. Wireless. And um, here, let me just do the next one here. She actually um, scores the stencils to a degree to help you kind of for alignment. I'm trying to see here now my cookie. I'm not able to go. I guess I'll move the. This is a smaller stencil holder from AliExpress. It's like two, three dollars compared to the the ones we see that are like thirty dollars. Mm -hmm. so if you want a deal, but it's smaller, so it doesn't work with your bigger cookies. So you it see, I'm like doing it all five color. inch, right? It looks about five inch. The stencil. Yeah, it's it's, it's really not that big. All right, so I'll do the green. And then I'm done. So she actually, after I bought this stencil, she actually introduced another layer. So in her shop, it's it's a five layer stencil. She has like um, little um, little dots in in between the design. See the cookie's not. Um, I don't know, like I the wonkiness over here, but mm -hmm. I can see through it. So this, it might turn purple because there's purple on top of this green. So I'm just going to try and see if I can do it. Oh, you see it's turning now. Yeah. But you can see how That's it pretty. really makes these defined patterns. And then you can just spackle on. So the stencil, I did load that to my groups this morning. It's just a cut your own. And then you can just quickly spackle that on. So again, use, another so Somebody pattern. was asking here, do you use uh, silk screen? I don't use silk screen that much. I, I don't, I know that like, I know that people like are all about it being perfect. I'm more about it being good enough. So everybody has their way, their things. For me, I mean, I don't want it. But at the end of the day, you know what? It is just a cookie. Yeah, it's like, it's my art form, but this is temporary art. I'm trying to make money. Like, you know what I mean? Like you have to work efficiently and fast. So good enough makes more money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just the facts. So my icing has been sitting it looks very watery here. Let me see if it's going to. And how long would you say you let the cookies dry between layers oh, of everything? Because it was such a, a fine mist, like really not long. Like when you're doing a super fine mist, you don't have to let them dry a long time. So my icing's been sitting and so it's not ideal there, but it's just to show you guys. And there's the little face and my bows. I was going to paint them while i was on but i'll just quickly do one to show you oh this is this is the purple that was with the green you see it but it's making like a gray so i'll just hit the middle and then i'll come in with the other purple <sighs> i 
there. And so you can just attach your little bows, you see? So yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that you can kind of put together at a reasonable like time, you know, if you do all your decorations in advance and that's it. I'm just trying to give you guys some different ideas and that you can execute quickly. So that's it. Sorry, Han. For what? I went a bit over. Oh, you, you're fine. <laughs> I went 40 minutes last time. <laughs> Without Here, even realizing. Can I just show, look at the how nice it is after it's so dry. Cool. It. It's very vintage. I don't know. It has a bit. Do, do you feel like it has a vintage vibe or am I yeah. not feeling it correctly? And I think even that watercolor base with those flowers on top would be really cool. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, that's, yes, exactly. No, I really like it. It's very cute. So here, let me take that out. <laughs> I don't punch people in the face. I kick them in the knees. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I just so they so they fall on their face? No, I don't do that. <laughs> I, I, I did. Know, um... <laughs> Terrible. Terrible, terrible. I did load some stencils in uh, today. If anybody's interested, those are in the coffee shop for three dollars. There's five designs with the listing. I hadn't uh, I hadn't done a stencil load in a while, so I did these five. If you guys are interested, that's it. Am I cracking you up? Okay, yes. I, no, I'm just laughing at myself. <laughs> Sometimes all we have to do, all we can do. Uh, so I also shared a sneak peek in my um, in my stories today. What I'm gonna be doing, and um, I forgot to sh I forgot to prepare a tutorial how I made the skulls. But I think we uh, we saw a tutorial from Mar a few weeks ago, um, and I even had a tutorial how to make the skulls. I used a mold from um, for. Uh, Oh, I'm getting sidetracked here, sorry. Uh, let me just... The ice cube tray. Ice cube tray, thank you. Ice cube tray, tray from Dollar Store. I I did it like years ago and then I started doing it again. But this skull actually I trimmed. So I froze the, the skulls um, and I trimmed it with a sharp knife so it wouldn't be so kind of bulky looking on my cookie. And now I'm using, I baked it off, and once baked, I, I used um, kind of runny electric pink icing. And I just brushed it on in a thin layer. I didn't want to use icing that was too, too thick because then I would lose all of the detail. And then you just have to let that dry. And it will take maybe, uh, I don't know, an hour or so for it to completely dry because it is a really thin layer. I highly recommend think, um, investing in electric paint. It's one of my favorite colors to use. And it's also great uh, to use for um, when you're making um, um, purple. And this is how you can pick it up and then place it on another tray or some, somewhere to leave it dry. Well, okay. I'm imagining kids having a good time doing that because it's like kind of messy. I guess mm -hmm. so. And so to make the cookies today, I, I don't know about you guys, but I can't seem to find like a really nice uh, tombstone. Like they're all, I guess they're all very nice, but they are either too short or so. This is a uh, this is not a cutter per se. This is um, Cindy um, sent me this years ago. Um, and Cindy is a, a student who took a class and we, you know, she would send me a lot of uh, uh, gadgets once in a while and it was filled with uh, with other things but I saw it and I'm like well this could be a cutter so I used it to cut out my cookies okay so I don't know if you can find this particular cutter I'm gonna try to get a template in my coffee shop hopefully soon and so I baked the cookies and then I did what Mar did with her uh, leaves so I, um, I used uh, this is a combination of purple and the black that's the color of my icing and the consistency i'm using it's um it's not super runny i didn't want to use super runny icing on this because i wanted to avoid adding too much because it is a larger cookie it's not a small cookie 
So I'm just going to add maybe 20, 25 second consistency here. Oh, is that baby. your usual sugar cookie? Hmm? Is that your usual sugar cookie? On yes, your it is. Yes, it is. It is my usual sugar cookie. And I'm going to spread it with a um, salad knife. You can use a brush as well. The salad knife works really well. Oh, did I use brush? I thought I used salad knife. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I thinking I used the salad knife? You're thinking about a different cookie, I think. I think it must have been a different cookie, yes. I decorate so many cookies, so I forget. But you can use a palette knife. It would be, I think, even, even faster. And then um, we're going to use what Mar did with the um, parchment paper, which is a really fun technique. If you haven't tried it, give it a try. If there is access, you see I'm going to remove it. So I'm just going to use a little piece of parchment and then we can place it on the cookie. But you said that you found wax paper worked as well. Yes, wax paper works as well. I find it works as well, because I have used it in the past. But this is what I, I'm trying to save my wax paper. You have to understand, they don't have wax paper in Spain, so I'm trying to save it as much as possible. So that's why I'm using really? parchment. Yes, they don't have, I, I haven't seen it anywhere. And then you have to let this dry overnight, preferably. Okay. And uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like. I have this piece right here. Okay. What thickness did you roll your cookies? Oh, this, well, these, I mean, because we are only doing this for demonstration, they are um, maybe a little less than quarter inch, about quarter inch. Oh, I'm already showing the design okay so <laughs> all right so here's my cookie and um basically just like mar showed you before this is all you have to do you peel it off and it gives it a really neat texture okay so the next step i'm going to use um i'm going to use the black icing and hopefully it's not oh, of course it is so i'm going to use my yeah, that would not, I don't think, have worked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, tissue paper wouldn't work. So tissue paper, it will, it will absorb. It has no coating. So it would absorb all of the liquid, and it will pretty much ruin your, I mean, unless yeah. you want to keep a paper, um, you don't want to do that. Okay. So I'm going to start... This is my scribe, and I'm just gonna mark the, the border so I know where to pipe. And we're going to, can you guys see all right? Or should I turn mm -hmm. on the button? Yeah, you good? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think so. What do you think, Ken? Yes, I think so. Yes. Well, the if you oh, yes, you can use a different cookie. You can use a gingerbread and probably uh, mm -hmm. work for that. Yes. Now I'm going to use uh, gray, and this is about twenty second consistency to make the stones. I'm just massaging it because since this morning it kind of separated a little. And that's pretty normal. If you have worked with realizing, I'm sure many of you have experienced um, separation. So, okay. I feel like I can't see anything. 
now. It looks like the surface of the sun. <laughs> but I can't see anything like myself, you know, because it's so dark here already. You're doing the bird box challenge. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I used um, number two piping tip to make the. Uh, what would this be? This would be grout, I suppose. Yeah. Normally, if you use a um, smaller tip, I would wait between the sections that are immediately next to each other. But you can see it's a pretty thick line, so I feel pretty safe that I'm not going to pipe over it. And I'm just using the tip of my piping bag today to kind of smooth the icing. You can see I'm not going in with a scribe. I'm kind of agitating the icing with the tip. So did you eat all the gummies that you could have maybe paired with this? What gummies are you talking about? Seriously? I mean, that was like, I need more. I actually, um, there, there's always a few that I don't like from the batch. And I, I don't throw them out. I leave them. And uh, yes, so I did eat even those. Oh, you even ate the ones you don't like? <laughs> yes, I was so desperate that I was like, ah, I'm going to eat them. Gosh. You sound like Ryan, my son. He he resorts to eating my chocolate chips from for baking when he's got a chocolate uh, craving. Yeah, but you have, like, come on, you, you have, like, what, the really, 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 really good quality chocolate. So mm -hmm. food that. No, no, he's that. eating, like, the chocolate chips, like, uh, whatever, the ones you get at the Walmart there. Okay, well, it's not bad well it's not bad i just find it like comical he's in here sneaking in my uh my supply <laughs> well he goes in you don't oh he goes in your uh, in your space and he steals it okay well that's a different story <laughs> that's a different story that's a big no you don't come in here and steal my stuff <laughs> no no so now i'm just gonna outline the tombstone Am I going? Where am I going? See. See, this is what happens when you use this technique. Sometimes you get... Um, Amber, you want to answer that one? Um, I think that's really up to you, like whatever you're more comfortable with. I use both depending on the project. Um, yeah, if I need really fine details like what Hannah's doing now, I will use the tipless bag because I don't have tips that small. Um, so it really depends. And if you like washing piping tips. It is a lot faster, I think, and easier to use the tipless bags. For me, I feel like I have more control over the icing when it's when it has a tip. Um, yeah. So it really just, um, it's up to you. You can try them both out and see which one you like better. The tipless at first, it takes just a little, little getting used to because we were so like conditioned with the tips, right? Once you get used mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. It's just so much less work, right? My family doesn't really get cookies, if you can believe that. <laughs> I try to give them to friends and family when I can, but usually by the time I finish a project, it's so stale that I don't want people eating it. Um, but if I if I can, you know, get it to them in time, they'll still eat them. I'm personally sick of them, so I'd rather eat a donut or a slice of cake. I'm with you. <laughs> Okay, so now you can um, push that aside. And I have here one that's been uh, kind of sitting here um, drying. 
So what we are going to do now, I'm going to just add some texture on here. And this is a pretty coarse brush that I have. What's the color difference, Han? Hmm? You see there's a... Oh, yeah, I see. I see that I have an opal. Probably just butter bleed, right? And maybe it's butter bleed. I don't know, but this one doesn't. Yeah, that's weird. Yes, I see that. It was a bit humid here, so and I just mm -hmm. turned it turn on the. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, it kind of works with that design. It's fine. Though. I mean, it, but yeah. uh, yes, I guess it is a color 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 bleed. So now I'm just gonna add some texture. This is a popular technique. I first did it with um, um, with a food wrap many years ago, almost mm -hmm. ten years ago. And then if you have like an axis on your brush, you can wipe it off. It just gives it a little texture on the top. Olga, we think it's a butter bleed. And you see, I'm not told, I'm not worried at all. It's okay. Because it's, I mean, we can only worry about things we can control. This is not something I can control. I know. It's just, you know, there are ways it's, to it's try to yourself a headache every time you have, like, some, I mean, you can't control yeah. weather, you can't control humidity, you can't control certain things. So um, it's going to be fine. And nobody who is going to order cookies from you, most of the time they don't even notice. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Me too, Byron. Now I need a donut. I could eat a donut. <laughs> I could eat a donut. Now I'm thinking about it. Yeah. So this is how you can add a little bit of texture on there. Okay. And I'm going to um, let's move this aside. And I'm going to finish this lovely skull here. And to do that, uh, how is the time? Okay. To do that, I'm going to use this is um, this is the Braxian Rich Dog Gray Settle Dust. Okay, this is FDA approved, so it's perfectly fine and used on edibles. I wouldn't eat it straight from a straight from the bottle, but <laughs> what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to add them on to the eyes and then follow uh, them to make it a bit spookier. Um, so did you bake those in the mold or do you have to mold them and take them no, out? So, to sorry, so to to do that, I have the mold upstairs, so I can't really show you more. Do you have the mold on hand? So it's a, usually it's purple colored. You can get it at a dollar store in this time of the year. What I do, I spray the nonstick spray and I roll each piece of a dough into a bowl and then I press it in. When you do, yes, this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And then I freeze it. The only thing is, like, this is a pretty rigid mold. It's not like a soft mold. So you have to kind of, um, what I do to get the, the skulls out, I bang it on a, on a work surface and it loosens, and loosens, loosens them up from the walls and then you can unmold them. So that's what I did. And then I froze them again because mm -hmm. I wanted them to be firm because these are not, you see how shallow they are? They are, yeah. I trimmed off maybe like a quarter inch or something, maybe more, because mm -hmm. I didn't want them to be too, too bulky on my cookie, okay? Yeah. And then you bake them off. Okay. I would now, I would recommend if you're using a recipe um, that you have that you really like, use a recipe without baking powder or baking soda because that will cause your cookies to spread and they will lose all of detail. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to here and we are going to do some cooking. So I have a prototype in front of me. So I still haven't found that cookie. It just vanished. Yes. You can find it? Still, no. I'm I, sure thought you, find I, it thought, I thought you found it. No. No? no. 
It's like it went to the place your cookie cutter was at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I found it, yes. I, I looked, I looked about, I have a lot of cookie cutters, maybe 50 boxes or something. I looked through each box about three times. I was so exhausted. And then next day I found it. He's not in the house. You know why I found it? Because, because, because you said I should start. I should sort the cutters. I do have. I do have them somewhat sorted. Um, oh, your son. <laughs> maybe <laughs> he's, he's six feet tall, so I don't know. Maybe he's. Right. He's not here, so it's not him for sure. Oh gosh. Okay. Oh gosh, no. What about you, Amber? Do you lose any of your stuff? Oh, of course. Yeah. I just lost something recently and I can't even remember what it was, but <laughs> oh, you can't know you don't miss it. Yeah, like, oh, okay. It's just, now it's just completely gone. Well, I suppose if you don't know what it was, it means probably it wasn't that important, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, guess I, mean, I don't know. It's, right? I lose templates a lot. Like I'll make a project and then put it in a pile. And then I need it to like, you know, upload to the coffee shop and I just, it's gone. Oh. Lost in the pile. Yes. So well, it happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. For a whole month, that's long. Mm. Finally, you find it. Usually, when you're not looking, that's when you find them. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to do um, the writing. Rest in peace. And for that, I'm going to be using, um, and this is electric pink again. Let me just move this. And I have it here. Hopefully, I can get the. Oh, okay, thank you. It's not clogged. I'm just gonna clean it up. My tip is a little dirty here. And this is PME 1.5. We have talked about this tip many times. So you see how fine this is compared to my, this is number two. Yeah, that PME 1.5 is great for writing. That's what I use. Okay, so let me just, I'm just going to quickly practice here what I want to do. Oops. Pam, did you make any templates for the eyes? With You know, you had done a few Halloween ones last uh, couple of weeks ago. Eyes? Yeah, the, uh, Kim is asking for Halloween eyes. Did you I, do have, I, I don't have uh, them up yet. Oh. I, mm -hmm. I do have... Um, um, I'm on the blog, I suppose. Okay. Now to do the rest and be rest in peace on here. I'm just going to, I'm going to use my scribe just to give me an idea where to start. So there's some place on there. Now keep in mind this surface is not smooth by any means. Oh no, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh. Yes, no, okay. Let me scrape that out. That's the downside of using tips. Yeah. Now the problem is this is not smooth, so it's not coming off as nicely. Mm -hmm. We'll make it work. The reality of cookie decorating. Yeah, so that's, what, that's what happens. Sometimes there is an air bubble, you know, so you mm -hmm. can't really, you know. 
avoid all, all air bubbles. Second time's the charm. This is a good cookie. I saw that, I think it was Olga said, this is a good beginner cookie. And even with the writing, because it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, the oh, yeah. Design, so. it's not, yeah, exactly. Well, you get to try a whole bunch of techniques, right? You get mm -hmm. to try. Another thing you could throw on there, Han, is the cookie moss, even. Oh, yes, that's true. Now, mm -hmm. I completely forgot. Um, I'm going to add, wait, this is still wet just gonna add some blink i know i'm going with unusual colors on here but i wanted to do something different everybody you know not everything has to be super dark yeah i think it is it's the electric I mean, it's pretty, pretty dark i guess i suppose it's pretty dark but and i'm just going to um the, the black is not ready but the the gray is ready you can use um um this is edible decorative paint it's silver metallic paint that you can use. Ahan, is electric pink your pink? Yes. It's my pink. It's my pink. If I can find a brush now, okay. I'm, just, I'm gonna use this one. But you do, I'm just gonna go very lightly over the gray. Doesn't have to have full coverage. Just a little shine. And we also want to do that over the black swirls. Okay. So I don't know if these are completely dry. I mean, would I am I gonna risk it? Let's see. I mean, these are definitely not dry, but they're crusted. So you get the idea. Mm -hmm. See, I squished it. It's not dry. I'm not going to mess with it. Also, what I did, um, I added the skull. But before I do that, I'm going to kind of splatter some of this paint on it. And um, so I have my brush loaded with the paint. And I'm just going to use the, the scribe. You can use your finger, but it is less, less messier, I find. Mm -hmm. OK. And to attach it on, I'm going to just use a little bit of icing on the back. Oh yeah, it does. It's true. Monster high. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that could be. See, so this one is completely painted. You could also use a little if you have a pumpkin mold that would also work well here. Hi, Cynthia. So that's me. Okay, I'm good. One oh five. This is a good design for tweens. You know, mm -hmm. like it's it's a. Uh, they're still kids. They like their treats, but they want to be grown up, you know? Yeah. I also wanted to tell you guys that I do have a beginner class coming up. Oh, I didn't know oh. that. Beginner class coming up. It's a beginner class using all pumpkin shape and doing four different characters. We'll cover uh, topics like different consistencies, how to color different colors. I'm going to demonstrate how I color my black oil icing with cocoa powder. And um, you know we'll we'll decorate all of these cookies and we'll have lots of fun. And you can see that in time for Halloween. It's on on October twenty third. So hurry up and sign up over at Global Belly. And I also wanted to tell you I just released a new tutorial. Uh, you, some of you probably seen this. 
um, during the live, but this is now live on my YouTube channel and also on the blog with all the details and tips and tricks on how to create coffee bubbles and how to make fun um, coffee cup cookies for your coffee loving friends. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all from me for today. You could do mm. neon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. I might, I might uh, actually take you up on that. Um, I'll just have to color some, some um, neon green or yellow. I think yellow. I'm gonna do. If I do it, I'll do yellow because it has a black background, kind of dark grayish. So thanks for joining us, everyone. A reminder: we have our decorating kits on Global Belly, and also the the subscription baking kits that come every month. The holidays are coming, so there's going to be lots of fun projects. You guys want to, um, you know, have a little decorating day. Maybe you're, you don't have all the gear. Everything comes to, to do the projects. Everything you need, like, in the box. So you don't have everything, then you don't have to worry about it. Everything's going to be there for you to um, be able to work. So thanks for joining us. And then on Tuesday, we'll be back. Don't forget to We're join back. us on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, do you know what you're doing? 12 p.m. Eastern time, our usual time. And do you know what you're doing? I think I it's time to it's officially time. move <laughs> to Christmas. <laughs> I think I don't know Christmas. yet. Well, or Thanksgiving. I do have. I don't know yet. Oh, yeah, I don't know yet because I haven't done a lot of Thanksgiving, and I had some great plans. Thanksgiving for, for me in like a week and a half. Like yeah. So, but, um, I'm ready Christmas. for Christmas. Yes. You're ready for so, Christmas. Can you anybody know? guess what Amber's <laughs> pattern on her cookies is going to be? Can anybody guess? Yeah, so Christmas, I think. Well, I don't know. I think well, I'm not yet. Go now, on. for us, we have to start early because you guys want to create things. So if you want to shop for all the things that we use, yeah. you have to start early. That's very true. Oh, very yeah, early. we just want to have it ready for you guys so you guys can have time to make it and yes. get all your supplies. So yes. you don't have to start yet, but we we do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or else, what's the point? <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you, uh, see you next week. Or, yes, next week. Bye. Bye.